Welcome, welcome, welcome. So many news once again this week in the exciting world of electric cars. But before that, I have a couple of news of my own about this channel. Uh, first, I'm excited to uh, tell you that I now have a channel sponsor, EV Annex. Uh, for those of you who are uh, Tesla owners, I'm sure you've heard of that brand. They are basically an aftermarket um, catalog of Tesla accessories. I have to say both of my cars have at least three uh, EVNX accessories on them. So I'm a fan. They've already sponsored my Facebook community. Um, I have a, a video about some of their products that I, that I thought would make really good gifts. So I worked with them before. I'm excited to have them as uh, the channel sponsors uh, again. So uh, go ahead and check them out if you haven't already, but I'm sure a lot of you already have uh, one, of their, uh, one of their products in your car. So that's news number one, welcome EV Annex. And uh, news number two is basically, there are just too many news as every week I am trying to jam as many of them as possible in the segment and it keeps growing and I feel like I end up skipping some news and or, or really going way too fast um, through them. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try something different. I'm going to go live every day, Monday through Friday, for the next couple of weeks so I can tell you about the news as they uh, come out and there's usually a couple of every every day and I'm, I, that way I can talk in details about them, tell you a little bit more about them, but most importantly, that way you can also participate in the live chat, talk to me and ask me questions or I can, you know, uh, 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 maybe I, you guys obviously can talk to each other. That would be, that would be awesome. Uh, and, and that way uh, we can uh, have this conversation together and discuss some of these news together. So that's what's going to be happening starting pretty much tomorrow and we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm planning to go live uh, on Monday around 7 p.m. Pacific time, but I will adjust as, as uh, all of our schedules hopefully come together. Okay, now on to the real news. And of course, Model 3 is the headliner once again. And uh, you know, a few weeks uh, a few weeks ago, I was kind of freaking out and I was really harsh on them, uh, basically saying that, listen, they're missing uh, their own deadlines. They've under-delivered so far in Q3, as far as Model 3 cars are concerned. And a lot of you said, well, Alex, you're freaking out way too much. You just relax, okay? Well, it turns out that I might have been right and uh, hopefully not. Again, don't forget, I'm rooting for Tesla and the Model 3. It is extremely important that, that Tesla gets it right. But there is another report that came out this week that one of their part suppliers was asked by Tesla to cut down on their parts uh, in for the December from obviously 5,000 to 3,000 per week, which kind of makes everybody think that Tesla is now planning on making less cars than uh, they were before. Um, mainly they, they, were, they were hoping to make 5,000, they're gonna make 3,000 instead in December, which is 40% decrease. You know, obviously not good news. We'll see what they say when the report uh, comes out. But again, I'm a little concerned again. And uh, unfortunately my concerns may actually have some merit uh, at this point. Um, Tesla had some really good news this week too. Now, as you know, they've been trying to build a factory or at least get the factory permission from the Chinese government for a while now, for several years. And it looks like they finally might have a deal of a wholly owned factory. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, if a non-Chinese company wants to do business and make products in China, they have to partner up and have a joint venture with a Chinese-based company. Now, the problem is, of course, you're gonna have to give them some of the profits, but you also have to tell them all of your secrets and patents. And a lot of times, they just get stolen or borrowed uh, and, and, you know, obviously Tesla didn't want to do that. So this is a really big win if, win if they can have their own factory in China. Now that actually won't, uh, ex it won't, um, eliminate the 25% tariff uh, that they're paying now on their cars as they're importing them. So even though they're going to be making it in China, the tariff will still apply. And, and just so you know, in China, Tesla's cost about 50% more than they're here in the United States. So it is tougher for them to sell them in China, but they've been doing pretty well. So this will probably, even though we'll get rid of that tariff, will cut cost enough to maybe make those prices a little bit more reasonable. So this is a really big deal. Uh, let's move on to Toshiba. Now, uh, we've already heard from a few other electronic companies, battery companies, that they've been working on batteries specifically for electric cars. Now, Toshiba this week uh, came out and said that they're very close to um, coming out and announcing a battery 
that's gonna have a pretty decent range, but the most important thing is they said they go, is the battery you will be able to charge it for 200 miles worth in just six minutes. It's gonna be 32 kilowatt uh, hour battery. Now we don't know six minutes to charge the whole battery. The whole battery is gonna be 200 mile range or it's gonna be bigger range, but you're just gonna charge it really quick to a certain level. Uh, either way, this is gonna be pretty impressive and obviously it's gonna be a, uh, if, you know, if it's gonna be available for other car manufacturers, a lot of them can catch up uh, on the range and compete with Tesla and Chevy Bolt much faster than they might have anticipated. So this could be a big news, but we'll see for, uh, we'll wait for an official announcement. Uh, another big thing that was happening last week is the Tokyo Motor Show in Japan. And that's where a lot of cars unveil their concepts and, and uh, uh, production uh, schedule. And there were a few cars that were, you know, worth uh, talking about. Now, um, Nissan just announced the new, uh, Nissan Leaf, the new one. Um, and they were uh, also teasing that they're gonna come up with something uh, bigger, better, and so forth. Everyone was excited. Uh, what it turned out to be was a Nissan IMX, which is an SUV. Um, they're saying it's gonna be going 373 miles, which, you know, a lot of times their measuring is very different from ours. Uh, here the EPA rating, uh, but that's all they said. Really there is no schedule. It looks like it's just the future of Nissan. So really it's just a pretty picture at this point when I got one of those myself uh, because I know Photoshop. So I, I, I'm a bit disappointed coming from a Nissan who seems to have the technology. Uh, Honda, if you remember a couple of weeks ago also announced the urban EV concept, which I thought looked like a cute little frog. Well, that cute little front is going to have a friend now, and it's going to be a Honda Sports EV Coupe, uh, which looks very similar. It looks like it's been designed in the same patterns and so forth. But once again, there's just no specs. There's no uh, uh, delivery estimates. So this is just yet another little dream. Uh, though, once again, remember, we, we're just supposed to, I'm excited. Uh, that these companies are finally coming up with understanding that they need to compete in the electric car market and they need to do something uh, to move forward. Uh, Mitsubishi uh, came up with an e-evolution concept. Uh, it's also a SUV, also no delivery dates or specs, but they're trying to kind of hold on to this bandwagon, which is okay, welcome. Um, hopefully they'll do more, but that's, that's what they announced. Um, now here's an interesting one, and this is a company that is, um, I don't even know how to pronounce, so that here's the name you guys read it uh, their car is uh, sort of a um, it's based on an open source software all the patents that Tesla opened up so they're using the you know public domain I guess to uh, to come up with this car and they already got actually pretty decent investment 200 and I'm sorry 340 million dollars have already been raised they're seeking 1.4 billion more but they do have this this cool looking car that they're saying is going to compete very soon um, you know um, I, obviously, the more the merrier as far as people trying to compete in the market, trying to come up with a better technology. So we'll see what happens with them, but they are now, is, are, they're, they're in the game now. Uh, so those are the pretty much notable uh, cars that I thought that came out of, out of the Tokyo Motor Show. Nothing huge, uh, but you know, it, it's good to see this thing keeps moving and moving forward. Um, Going back to Nissan Leaf, as you know, that they, they, they announced it only a couple of months ago, and they're already saying that they have about 9,000 orders <coughs> that they've um, had, um, which is, uh, I'm not really sure if it's impressive. I mean, compared to their total sales of over 100,000 um, uh, Leafs sold in, in the US, it's, it's really not that much. And I think the 9,000 orders is worldwide. Um, but it looks like they're selling them. Um, you know, they, it's coming in the US early in 2000. 18, um, but those are the numbers they've released. I think they're okay, uh, though some people are impressed. Uh, let's move on to Toyota, and you know, it looks like they're finally admitting that their whole, their, their, the concept of hydrogen fuel cells, and you know, specifically Toyota Mirai, uh, whatever, however you wanna pronounce it, um, is, is really not the way to go. Um, they're admitting it, and at the same time, they're gonna say, they, they say they're gonna continue doing this. Um, as you know, th this car has only been sold in California, where there's really limited amount of um, hydrogen fuel cell charge uh, charging station, a uh, fuel cell station, whatever you want to call them. Um, it's not doing very well, uh, and I, I don't know why they, they, they continue going with this technology, uh, but it looks like they're gonna try to uh, uh, kind of a move to the electric car, battery electric cars, um, very soon they're saying that's where they're going, but they're going to continue with a hydrogen fuel cell. 
<sighs> we'll see what happens. It's just really tough to see a company that used to be on a, such on a, on the front of the uh, uh, technology and pushing the envelope just be really far behind and uh, be everybody at this point uh, in such important technology. Um, now let's talk about something that I haven't seen in too many people or anybody really talk about, but I think this is pretty important. Oklahoma Supreme Court has struck down an EV tax that was uh, uh, passed by their legislature, uh, which is a big deal because a lot of states are trying to, you know, they're losing money because a lot of this uh, electric car owners don't, I guess, pay, they believe enough of the gas tax because we don't buy gas. Um, so they're trying to tax just any EV owner and the Oklahoma Supreme Court struck that down saying, can do it because you know the arguments on both sides one one side is saying hey we need infrastructure infrastructure comes from the gas tax and these people are not paying it because they're not buying gas but they're still going to be using it because they're driving cars and that's a good point on another hand the other side saying listen we're trying to promote green energy we're supposed to be helping those people rather than hurting them by making them pay more money and that side at this point won so i think this is very important because other states will probably um, go the same route. Now, I should also mention that the, they do have a law in Oklahoma where uh, the homeowners uh, are charged fees for having solar panels and not having to draw the electricity from the grid, kind of in the same concept. So it's kind of weird that they have that okayed, but the uh, EV tax disallowed. But nevertheless, this is something that might really set the presence for the rest of the states in the United States. Um, Let's move on to, well, let's go back to Tesla, really. As you know, I've been trying not to follow the story too closely, but it kind of keeps coming back. Um, you know, they, they fired a few hundred uh, workers uh, Tesla has, and there were some questions about how they were fired or why they were fired. Well, now that number apparently went all the way up to about 1,200 because a lot of Solar City employees have been getting laid off as well. And I would still be fine with it because, again, listen, I don't want to, no, none, none of us really. Uh, should tell them how to run their business, especially that Elon Musk is running it pretty freaking fine, you know, for, for this company. But once again, uh, the employees are claiming, uh, the Tesla is claiming that they've, this was based on performance reviews and employees were saying, what reviews? We've never had a review since the acquisition. So how can we be let go based on the reviews that don't exist? And Tesla is not really replying back to that claim, which looks funny. Uh, again, I don't want to take you know, I don't want to take sides here because I, I like when all the facts are out, but it just once again looks a little weird, but, but I, I'm still going to be on the side of Tesla because they should be able to do with their uh, workforce what they um, see fit, uh, of course, within the law. And I hope that's, that's what happened here. Um, now, interesting news for some of model, Tesla Model S and Model X 75D uh, car owners because they are getting and a lot of them already have gotten a software upgrade where they're actually going to make their cars much much faster overnight so the for the uh, model s a certain model s 75ds uh, the car is going to go 0 to 60 uh, 4.2 seconds instead of the previous 5.2 seconds and for the model uh, uh, x 75D, uh, it will go uh, down from 6.0 to 4.2. Again, this is 0 to 60 miles an hour, which is a very impressive improvement with just a software update. Now, you got to check with your service advisor and your service center if your car falls into this very interesting limited category of cars that uh, are, are even available to, to have that uh, software upgrade because pretty much all of the other ones are limited by some hardware pieces and parts. But if you're one of those lucky people, your car is probably already much, much faster than you kind of uh, had it uh, originally when you purchased this. And this is once again, just tells you how powerful this whole idea that Tesla has been implementing is where your car can actually get better overnight with just a over the air update uh, and just get better and better, uh, even though it ages and supposed to lose value. And, and, and this is why Tesla has really separated themselves for the rest of the old school uh, car technology and car makers, because they're just, they're just doing this stuff and, 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 and we love it, right? Um, well, 
These are all the news that I have for this week. Once again, tomorrow I will start doing daily, small daily news segments. I'm going to be live. So I really hope you guys can join me and we can chat and interact in real life. Uh, and that way I can also tell you a little bit more about each news rather than jamming through them pretty fast just because there's so many of them. So I hope to see you guys tomorrow, if not at any point of time uh, when I do this uh, throughout the week. Of course, I will repost the replays. So if you miss them, uh, you can always watch them um, a few hours or maybe even days later. That's it for now. I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.